Hello there, this is Yanis with episode number 10 of the Archive Basic Tutorial Series. So far we've seen how to create choices for the player that immediately lead to different outcomes. The player chooses A over B and ends up reading the contents of element A and not B. Simple. But what if we want to give our player choices that influence later parts of the game? For example, what if there is a locked door that will open only when the player finds the appropriate key? How do we check whether the player has that key? To do such a thing, we need variables. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video and every video of the basic tutorial series. Variables store pieces of information in the computer's memory so that we can access them later in the game. Such pieces of information can be an integer number, for example 1, minus 5, 0, 50, minus 2000, etc. A float number, for example 5.34, 1.0, minus 3.5, 0, 0.0, etc. A string, which is a word or a sentence, for example somebody's name or a password. And a boolean, and that is a variable that can only take the values true and false. For the moment, Arcweave only supports global variables. If this doesn't mean much to you, don't worry about it, it basically means the variables are always present in memory and can be accessed from anywhere in the project at any time. For example, we can add a locked drawer in the apartment's kitchen. If we go to the kitchen element and uh, we add a new element next to it, and now we need to connect this to the kitchen element, and add a label that says search the cabinets and we need one more connection for going back to the kitchen otherwise we'll be stuck there forever so now if we get to the kitchen we can search but find nothing uh, other than a locked drawer um, let's set the living room as the starting element and do a test run so we go to the kitchen uh, let's put this before going to the living room so we search the cabinets we find nothing of interest hang on there's a particular drawer that seems to be locked we can we can go back and we need to place a key somewhere in the apartment for the player to find Let's go to the bathroom and create a new element and a new connection that gives the player the option to examine the mirrors. And we can add the mirrors asset. Here it is. Now we can add the option to examine the corner above the door. We need a new element. And after we find the key, we just want to go back to the main bathroom elements. So we put another connection or we can use a jumper just to keep things clean. Now, if we run this, we are again, we start from the living room again. We go to the bathroom and examine the mirrors, examine the corner above the door, find the key, actually let's um, 
let's put the asset. There is a key asset here that we can use. There you go. So we find the key and we go back. But wait, we can actually examine the mirrors again, uh, examine the corner above the door again and find the key again. And again, and again, and we can go through this process as many times as we want. This is because we haven't stored the information of having found the key in a variable. Therefore, no matter how reasonable our logic is, the game will not follow it. The computer will not follow it. And let's fix this. To create a new variable, we need to go to the lower left side down here uh, of the screen and click on Global Variables. Now we click on New Global Variable and we give it a name. Has underscore key. And since we only need to check if this is true or false, it can be of a Boolean type. And yes, we want the initial value to be false, since the player doesn't start the game with the key. Good. Now where do we go with this? First of all, we want the variable has key to change from false to true when the player finds the key. To do this, we will add a tiny segment of code to the element where this discovery happens. So let's go to this element give it some space underneath and hit return so we create a new line. Then we can click on the arc script code up here and we add an arc script segment. And in there we can type the following line of code has underscore key equal sign true. And this means the value of the has key variable becomes true. We see that the variable's name turns to blue. This means that Arquive has found the variable we wrote among the ones that we have already defined. If we make a typo here, then it's not blue anymore. Arquive does not recognize the variable's name. And we also get this warning symbol down here. Both useful signs that we've typed some mistakes. So let's correct this. And we also see that the word true turns to red. This is also a good thing. It shows that true is an acceptable value for our variable. Let's run this for a moment from the start. And here's something we have mentioned early on, and now it's time to start using the debug option. Once in the play mode, we click anywhere in the browser window and we get those two buttons again, restart and debug. If we click debug, a little window appears that shows us our project's variables, their type and their current value. Currently, we don't have the key, so the value of the has key variable is false, which is, of course, its initial value. So let's go and find the key. We go to the bathroom, examine the mirrors, examine the corner above the door, find the key, and now we see that the value of the variable has been refreshed, has changed to true. The debugger is particularly useful when things don't go as expected and we need to track the value changes of variables as we play through the project. Now we obviously don't want the player to infinitely find and refine the key. We need to create some logic that says, look, game, if the player has the key, don't let them search again for it. With variables, this translates to if the has key variable is false, let the player take the key. If has key is true, don't let the player search the mirrors again. Or if you want to allow the player to search again, don't let them find anything. So let's create these two outcomes. If the player has the key already, examining the mirrors will reveal nothing. So we have to copy and paste the examining mirrors element. And then we can change the two titles to
So bathroom mirrors first time, and bathroom mirrors having the key. Now, in this element, let's delete the whole paragraph about the mirror angles and finding the spot on the door. And now we need to control when the player sees what. When the player sees this, and when the player sees this. This is where we need branches, and we'll add them in the next video. If you're finding these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to Arqueave's official YouTube channel. You can also follow Arqueave on Twitter and Facebook. Let the games begin! Thank you for watching, and we'll speak very, very soon. Mm -hmm.